In this video lecture, we will review our knowledge on properties and theorems of the Z transform. Okay. The most important and fundamental theorem of the Z transform is its linearity. Okay. So, in linearity, we need to uh, check whether Z transform X, which is composed of uh, additional two signals, alpha times uh, F of K, beta times G of K, where F and G are two arbitrary signals, and alpha and beta through arbitrary real numbers. <clears throat> okay, in order uh, for the transformation to be linear, we need to satisfy that x of z should be equal to alpha times f of z plus beta times g of z, where f of z is the z transform of f of k, and g of z is the z transform of g of Okay. okay, actually the proof is very easy and I will not go over uh, the proof uh, in this video lecture, but since z transform is basically composed of the addition operation, it's an infinite sum, it uh, won't break linearity. Okay, good. So, okay, is it linear? As you can see, it's linear, everything is fine and good. So, the other uh, property is multiplication by, uh, by uh, a times k, or geometric multiplication. Actually, it's very important because uh, similar to the uh, differential equations where exponential functions are very important, in a discrete time uh, domain, the multiplication by uh, a to the times k with a geometric series is uh, very critical. Okay, uh, the idea is this. Okay, let's assume that we have a signal x, which has a z transform x of c. Okay, if I multiply x of k with a to the power k, where alpha is a complex or real number, and obtain a new signal, what is y of c? Okay, so is it an easy way of doing that, or we just need to do it for each other c? Okay, the good thing is there is a theorem which is uh, useful and uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, let's look at the z transform of y of k is equal to k is equal to zero to infinity y of k z to the power minus k. Okay. This is equal to k is equal to 0 to infinity, a to the power k, x of k, z to the power minus k. Okay, so let's make a change of variable. Okay, this is 0 to infinity, x of k, times, I think I can do this, z to the power a to the power minus k. Okay, good. So let's call it z bar. This is equal to k is equal to 0 to infinity x of k times z bar to power minus k. And we know that z bar is also a complex number. So this is technically equal to x of z bar. So in other words, x of z is equal to x of z bar, which is equal to x of z divided by a. Okay, so it means that in time domain, if you multiply your signal, so let's change the color, with a to the power of k, in the z domain, you technically scale the z axis, or z, it's not axis, because it's a z plane by a 1 over a. Okay, so multiplication is one domain, uh, is the scaling in the other domain. Okay, so let's look at if it's correct or not. It's correct, as you can see. Okay. So this is the Z transform. We just expanded it. Then we made a technical change of variables or a reorganization. And then we found this final result. Y of Z is equal to X uh, of Z divided by A. Okay, multiply in time domain. We are scaling in the Z domain. Okay, good. So the other theorem which is called complex translation theorem, is very similar. We are related with the multiplication uh, of a geometric sequence. It states this. Okay, so this is a more general uh, or more related with our uh, course, where we have a uh, time domain signal, x of t. Okay, we sample it to obtain x of k t. Okay, Good. or we can also x of k. Okay, good. So x of t is now a time domain signal. In time domain, and continuous time domain, 
Uh, we multiply x of t with an exponential function e to the power minus alpha t, where alpha is a complex number. It can also be a real number, of course. Now, we sample y of t to obtain y k of t or y k. And the question is, what is the z transform of this new uh, discrete time sequence? Okay, so in this respect, what the main differences with previous uh, uh, Property is we multiply in continuous time domain, we sample the signal, and we take the Z transform. Okay, so we have X of T, we sample it to obtain X of K, take the Z transform, and we multiply X of T with E to the power minus alpha T, X of T, we sample it, X of K. Uh, it's y of k, of course, y of c, and we are looking if there is a relation between x of c and y of c. Okay, yeah. So actually, there is. So uh, yes, okay, I not need to do that. Okay, so let's clean everything and let's first sample y of t. Okay, and see uh, what kind of behavior we have y k of t is equal to okay is a bit, uh, e to the power minus alpha okay capital t k right it's simple it's not that hard x k of t y of k is equal to e to the power minus alpha t to the power k x of k okay as you can see if we called it a y of z is simply equal to x of z divided by a instead of a if we write this x equal to e to the power alpha t times z Okay, I think it's fine. As you can see, we technically use the uh, multiplication by a to the power of k theorem to uh, prove or show uh, complex translation theorem. Okay, so in the midterm, since it's an open board, open note exam, you will use next note, you will use the tables. It's uh, good to know the fundamentals and basic operations uh, on Z transform and uh, time domain operations. Okay, very good. So, and now, Okay, this is the result. As you can see, uh, it is yk of t, and if we write yk of t, we obtain this, which is simply, if we call it e, it will be e to the power of t. So this should be alpha, this should be alpha, but it's uh, not a big deal. Okay, so it's kind of easy. Now, uh, we will look to uh, shifting theorem, and I think it's the most important theorem, which you need to know, uh, by heart, uh, because if you just don't remember, if you just well, shift the theorem, because we will use this theorem, the bandwidth space property, so much in the class, such that you need to know this specifically very well. Okay, so actual shifting theorem has three parts, and first part uh, is the causal shifting, which is the most important part, and it's kind of uh, relatively easy to remember and understand. Okay, so what is causal shifting? I will go into that. Okay. So shifting right by n or causal shifting. Okay, very good. So what is this? So I will show it first uh, graphically. So we have a signal x of t or x of k. It doesn't matter. Uh, we can obtain x of k uh, by sampling a continuous time signal or x of k can be just discrete time signal. It doesn't matter. Y of k is equal to x k of k minus n, where n is a positive integer. Okay. And we want to compute y of z, especially in terms of x of z. Okay, causal shifting is very easy. Okay, this is like this. Okay, let's change the color. Let's assume that this is my signal, discrete time sequence signal. Okay. Okay. It goes like this. Okay, so two impulses. Okay. Good. And that's uh, x and y. Okay. So if I shift x of k by 1, y of k 
k minus 1, I simply shift it to the right. So this will be 0. Now this will go here. This will go here. This will go here, here, and here. Okay. So we shift towards forward direction. But it's a causal shifting because the output is the delayed version of the input. Okay, so the causality is important to understand the basics and the theorem. And we will technically use the idea of causality. And we assume that, or we don't need to assume it here, but x of k is equal to 0 when k is less than 0. Okay, so we always assume that. Because in this course, we generally assume that the signals are causal. Okay, yeah. So how we prove it? Okay, so let's change it here. Okay, so let's try to prove it. Uh, very good. Okay, good. So the idea is obtaining y of z, which is equal to, from k is equal to 0 to infinity, yk, z to the power minus k. As you can see, I'm using a unilateral z transform here, but I can also use a bilateral z transform since I already assumed that x of k is equal to 0 and k is less than 0, and it doesn't even matter because we are doing a cause shift. Okay, good. This is equal to k is 0 to infinity x of k minus n z to the power minus k. Okay, so since I know that x of k is equal to 0, for k is less than 0, and since I am shifted the inside by n, I can simply write this, right? k is equal to n to infinity x of k minus n z to the power minus k. Okay, because when k is equal to n, it's equal to 0, and we know that for negative values here, uh, x of, for example, negative minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, there you go. So what we can do is we can make a change of variables such that let's call k is equal to m plus n. n is here, k is here. Technically, m is equal to k. Okay, m is equal to k minus n. Okay. No problem with that. Okay, so very good. K is equal to m plus. So, okay, no problem. So in this case, y of z is equal to. Okay, when k is starting with n, n is starting from zero, which is good. Now, instead of k minus n, I should seem to write m. Okay, z to the power minus m plus n. Okay, so here this is an index starts with m, this is an index starts with m, z to the power minus m plus n. So let's leave this n here, z to the power minus n, m is equal to 0 to infinity x of m, z to the power minus n. So what is this? We know that this is equal to x of z. So y of z is simply equal to z to the power minus n x of z. Okay, so it means that if I shift my signal in time domain, in the z of the domain, I multiply with z to the power minus n, and n is an integer here. Okay, so okay, this is the like uh, clear proof. So the same operations, uh, we wrote the z transform of y. Instead of y, we uh, wrote x uh, k minus 1, x of k minus 1. Uh, we make this uh, change of uh, starting index because x of k is equal to 0 for less k is less than 0. Uh, change of variables where k is equal to uh, n plus n. If we do these operations, we obtain this result. So y of c is equal to z to the power minus n and x of c. Okay, so this is very important and it's very easy, right? If you shift your signal by a one step, your z transform is z to the power minus 1, x of z. If it is two step, z to the power minus 2, x of z. Okay, so it's a very easy to remember. 
and memorize and understand. Okay, so for some theorems it may be hard. I understand you should you can just look at the tables or lecture notes, but please try to remember this from your heart. Okay, good. So, okay, now we will do something different. We will shift left by n, which is a non-causal shifting, and we will apply bilateral Z transform. Okay, so this is important. And as you can see, bilateral Z transform starts from k is equal to minus infinity. So it is from minus infinity to infinity. N is integer. So uh, shifting by left is simply showed with the signal. Y of k is equal to x k plus n. Why it's non-causal? Because if y k is the output, in order to uh, obtain the value of y at k, we look at the value of input k plus n. So we are using feature information. Okay, let's show it graphically. Okay, now, okay, this is. So let's assume that the input the signal, the x of k is still at. Okay, so let's do like this. Okay, and let's assume that we shift by a one, shift by one. So shifting to right means that in order to compute minus one, y minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 plus 1 because n is equal to 1 so it is 0 okay it's good so now in order to compute 0 I need to use information of 1 1 0 as you can see I'm shifting this in, uh, to the left to obtain my y of k okay in this kind of operation it's always nice to uh, draw graphically to understand the basics and, and the concept Okay, so let's try to uh, uh, show the result using the Z-transfer. Okay, yeah. So I think we will do the same thing, and uh, technically the proof is exactly the same. Okay, so Y of Z is equal to, okay, now we are using unilateral, no, bilateral Z-transfer, minus infinity, infinity, Y of K, z to the power minus k, it is equal to k minus infinity to infinity, x k plus n, z to the power minus k. Okay, it's really good. Uh, nothing is uh, fancy. Now what we will do is, uh, we will directly make a change of coordinates. Okay, because, uh, and in this case, k is equal to m plus n. Okay, no, this is now m minus n. Okay, uh, k is equal to m minus n. y of z is equal to, okay, x, let's look at this, m. It's good, right, because since k is equal to m minus n, it is m, z to the power minus K, not K, of course, it shouldn't be K, okay, so instead of K, we will write M minus N, okay, so N is integer, N is finite, right, it's like 1, 2, 3, or something like that, okay, so if K starts from minus infinity, N cannot change, right, M is so, it will also start minus infinity, if k goes to infinity, a will also go to infinity. So this is the power of uh, bilateral z transform. Okay, so what I can do is everything is fine. Okay, m is infinity minus infinity x of m, z to the power minus m, and I obtain z to the power m. So what is this? This is x of z y of z is equal to z to the power n x of z. Actually, obtain the same result. Since now, instead of plus the minus n, we have plus n. Instead of minus n, we obtain z to the power n. So if you use bilateral z transform, non-causal shifting will give a very similar result to the causal shifting. Okay, good. So this is the detailed proof. Everything, all of the operations are here. Okay, x of k plus n, 
vj is change k with m uh, operations here so y of c is equal to c to power x of c okay good so this is what you learn from signals and systems course okay so if we technically use bilateral z transform anyway causal and non-causal shifting is very similar one is z to power minus n one is z to power n Nothing is uh, fancy, nothing is different. But we will do something else, uh, which will be slightly important when we are solving the uh, difference equations, but still the most important shifting theorem concept is the causal shifting. Okay, because it's very fundamental for our course. This is more like a uh, brain gymnastic. Okay, in this case, we do non-causal shifting, the same thing. However, we will still use unilateral z transform okay so no more bilateral z transform okay so our z transform will be still use the data from zero to infinity so let's look at this okay let's assume that this is my signal and we still assume that x of k is equal to zero for k is less than zero okay so this is my signal Okay, so this is my signal. Okay, good. So what I do is I shift left by one. Okay, so first do the shifting. Okay, so this will be here. This will be here. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, it's nice. So here nothing seems wrong, right? Okay. But when I'm taking Z transform, as you can see, I start with zero. I don't shift my starting index. So when taking Z transform, I will still use data here. And I will discard anything that is pushed. Okay, here. So as you can see, I will lose some information or I need to subtract something uh, to compute my Z transform when we shift in a non-causal direction and when we still use unilateral Z transform. Okay, good. Uh, let's do it. And this will be a little bit tricky. So Y of Z is equal to Okay, from k is equal to 0 to infinity, y of k, c to the power minus k, k is 0 to infinity, x, k plus n, c to the power minus k. Okay, uh, it's nice. Okay, now well, let's write k is equal to n minus n. Let's change the coordinates, okay? So this is equal to, so x of m. This is good, right? This is x of m. z to the power, instead of minus k, it's minus m plus n. Okay. So if k is going to infinity, m will also go to infinity. So upper bound is same. But when k is equal to 0, m is equal to m. Okay, this is nice. So let's leave this n, z to the power n, okay, m is equal to n infinity x m z to the power minus m. So compared to the previous result, everything is very similar. This is same, this is same, this is same, but starting index is different. In order to write this in terms of x of z, what I need to use is I need to add some stuff, right? Because I don't have 0, 1, 2 to the power m. So what I do is this, okay? This is also equal to z to the power m. Instead of m, if I start from 0, m is equal to 0 to infinity, x of m, z to the power minus m. In order to write this, I need to subtract this from k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 because I have n minus n data from 0 to n minus 1. 
x of k c to the power minus k. Okay, very good. So let's clean the upper parts. Okay, so we are going somewhere. It seems very nice. Okay, let's change the color. So y of z is simply equal to z to the power n x of z minus k is 0 to n minus 1 x of k z to the power minus k. So what is different is this. Okay. If you do non-causal shifting, but if you're forced to use unilateral transform, it's somewhat forcing a causality. You need to consider uh, the variables. And these are technically kind of the initial conditions of the Z-transform. I, I will cover this later when we talk about the uh, solution of difference equations. Okay, so let's understand this by using some examples, right? Okay, so Z-transform of xk plus 1, xk plus 1 is equal to what? Okay, z times x of z minus z times x0, right? Okay, so z transform of x k plus 2 equal to z square x of z, z square x of 0 minus z times x of 1. Okay, good. And if we do the similar thing, k plus 3, we will obtain very similar result. As you can see, we directly use these conditions when we are taking, when we're solving the difference equations in the time domain. Okay? Uh, because sometimes we need to take the z transform with respect to z to power k plus 2, even if it's a non causal shifting, but it's uh, not technically shifting. We are trying to relate x of z x of x of c and z transform of y k plus 2. Okay, so uh, this is uh, basically slightly different than the other result. Okay, so this is the proof, which is similar, as you can see. You can also see that it's lecture notes. So we wrote x k plus 1, and uh, we make a change of coordinates. We technically adjusted the starting index z to the power n here, we obtain this final result. Okay, good. So let's show some examples. Okay, now this is just a similar result. Okay, so we have a unit step function and let's call it u of k or it can be h of k and we know that unit step function, so let's change the color, is look like this, right? Okay, this is equal to zero, so we know that. And output is y of k is equal to u to the power k minus one. Okay, output is simply a delayed version of this. Okay, so let's clean this. So if I look at the output, I obtain this. Okay, the question is compute the z transform of the output both directly and using the shifting property. If you use the shifting property, it's very simple uh, because y of z is equal to z to the power minus 1, u of z. Uh, what is the z transform of unit step function? If you remember, uh, z to the power minus 1, 1 over 1 minus z to the power minus 1, it is equal to z to the power minus 1, 1 minus z to the power minus 1. It's very easy, right? Okay, so we found uh, very quickly. Uh, I think if we write this, it will be 1 over z minus 1. So I think it's correct. Okay, this is good. So we solve it very quickly using shifting property. But we can also solve this directly. Okay, so what is u of k? Okay, so what is u of k? Or what is y of k? y of k is equal to u of k minus sigma k, right? What is sigma k? Sigma k is the Kronecker law that of impulse function. This. Okay. So if I subtract 
delta function from u of k, i of t, and y of t. So y of z is equal to 1 over 1 minus z to the power of minus 1 minus z terms of the delta function. What is z terms of the delta function? If you remember, it is equal to 1. Okay, since it's equal to 1, this is equal to 1 minus 1 minus z to the power of minus 1. 1 minus z to the power of minus 1. It is equal to z to the power of minus 1. 1 minus z to the power of minus 1. Okay. So it's still easy, but as you can see, with shifting property, it's super obvious. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Okay, we have another example. Okay, no, this is the solution, as you can see. So another example. Okay, uh, y of k is defined as this. x of k is input, y of k is the output. It's a cumulative sum. It's technically the integration in this discrete domain. So it's a system. Uh, system is accumul accumulator. And the idea is let's compute the Z transform using the shifting property. Okay, so how we can do this? It's still uh, very easy to do that. Uh, okay, uh, Y of K is this. So let's write this Y of K minus Y of K minus 1. Right? I can do that. It is equal to, so this is extra, x of k. Is it correct? I think it's correct. Okay, because the difference between y of k and p of sample is simple x of k. And now we converted everything into a difference equation. Okay, so if we take z transform of both sides, y of z minus y of z, z to the power minus 1, is equal to x of z, y of z, 1 minus z to the power minus 1 is equal to x of z, okay, y of z is equal to 1 over 1 minus z to the power minus 1, x of z, okay, and this is technically the definitive transfer function uh, of this uh, accumulator, okay, everything is correct, perfect. Now, uh, let's go different theorems. They're important. Uh, some of them are uh, very easy. Some of them are like not uh, very easy. But as I told you, the I think the most important theorem that you should know easily is shifting, especially causal shifting. OK, so what is initial value theorem? OK, so let's assume that we have a signal x of k and z transform is equal to x of z. OK x of k, okay. So, initial theorem states that if x of c is equal to uh, z transform x of n, x of zero, initial value of the z transform is found by this limit if this limit exists. Okay, it's important. If this limit exists, x of z is given by this limit. Actually, proof is very easy, okay. Uh, limit z goes to infinity x of z is equal to limit z goes to infinity let's write the z transform z to power minus k times x of k okay this is equal to limit z goes to infinity let's write this zero plus x of 1, z to the power minus 1, plus x of 2, z to the power minus 2. It goes like this. Okay, when z is going to infinity, as you can see, all of these are going to 0. So it is simply equal to x of 0. Okay, this is good, right? It's kind of fairly easy to understand initial value theorem. Okay, now we will move on to, and this is proof, final value theorem. So let's remember final value theorem. Okay, and these are uh, time domain. Uh, I kind of assume that you know the initial value and final term in the S domain, which is also important. Uh, but you can uh, look at your lecture notes from 301 and 202. Okay, good. So final theorem states that if limit exists, if x of k is a convergent sequence, steady state value of x of k or its uh, limiting value when k is going to infinite is equal to limit when z is going to 1. 1 minus z to the power minus 1, x of z. If you remember in the 
continuous time minimum, we are using this relation. X of t limit s is going to 0, s time x of s. We will see that s is very closely related to 1 minus c to the power minus 1 later in the class. But let's just skip this. Okay, good. So this is the final theorem. 